everybody continue their <laughs> their eating while while they're, they're, you're listening to my few words. I think I think that's a little bit of a of a dream world expression, <laughs> a few words. But but uh, we'll see what develops. I'm pretty tickled uh, in that uh, I just received news from uh, the uh, Rapid City area that uh, son David and, and me are, are going to be on the Mickelson Trail uh, event this year and, and uh, We'd uh, tried to get in it, and uh, it was filled up in one day, the Mickelson Trail. So we got on the waiting list, and and we're all set. We'll uh, we'll be uh, able to take it all in, and and uh, it won't be our first one, but but we're we're pretty tickled that that uh, we're going to be out there. Now, while I'm in. So such a good mood, I feel like I should tell you <laughs> all that uh, uh, I have such a warm spot in my heart for the Briggs Library in Brookings, South Dakota. It's uh, and it's not a it's not a recent thing. <laughs> I've lived with that feeling of, of camaraderie with the staff, the wonderful staff up here at Briggs. I, I've, been, I've been living with that for well over 50 years, see? So it isn't instantaneous. It's, it's, uh, it's long, a long time and, uh, and, and a lot of appreciation uh, in my feelings. Now, in order to put those things in perspective, and I think this being the archives, why uh, I think we'll uh, we'll go back in history, and and I'll be able to tell you uh, why I have this uh, this great feeling for the building and the staff. Um, we'll start with 1966. Imagine, and and. Uh, the Jack 15 was uh, four years old at that time. Uh, that was uh, uh, old hat, but the coaches set up the Jack 15 in those days. You see, the Prairie Striders didn't come into effect until 69, three years later. So the coaches put on these wonderful events each year. Well. It so happened that in 69, uh, Hilton Briggs, uh, who I got to know quite well, and he's a little bit responsible for my, for my feelings. We, we, we were uh, racquetball or handball players. Oh, hi, Dave. Welcome. Have, have some uh, good food. Okay. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, so I got to know Hilton uh, through uh, uh, the handball, which was was set up by Pete Torino and, and Tom Woodall in the barn. The, the, the only uh, uh, place that it, it existed, and, and it had the whole the whole floor. And Pete and Tom did a great job with it, and and Hilton. Uh, really got in got, got into this uh, running thing through uh, uh, through the adult fitness program. So uh, greetings, welcome. And, oh, have some food too. <laughs> and and uh, he came up in 1966 with with uh, a relay team and. He, he made all the contacts and signed up all the, the people that were going to uh, run this first relay of the Jack 15. 
It was going to take 15 people. They were each run a mile, you see. Now, unbeknown, unbeknown to most of us, we didn't realize that Hilton Briggs was, was the runner that he, that he <laughs> turned out to be. The guy was fantastic, but he, he didn't broadcast it. Or, uh, he, he had the record for the mile in the adult fitness program, and it was six minutes and eight seconds. Well, there wasn't anybody within a, a, a minute of it. You know, it, uh, it was incredible. But, but uh, he, was, he was that good, and that probably gave him the idea uh, for the relay team. Now, uh, he recruited only department heads and deans, and of course, he was in a position to do that, and, and also uh, political people. And uh, they, they always liked to get exposure, so he didn't have any trouble <laughs> filling, <laughs> filling uh, the ranks of, of the uh, relay team. He, uh, looking back on it, which is easy to, to be a quarterback uh, when you can look back, uh, he probably shouldn't have run the first leg but he chose to assign himself to the first leg, so he had one mile. And in those days, and it's still there, why up in white, uh, the first half mile is downhill. And then when you turn right on the old course, why it's flat. Well, besides being a good runner, Hilton was a competitor. <laughs> It was scary he was such a competitor. So the gun went off in white for this 66 running. And Hilton, I'm sure he thought to himself, I'm only going to run a mile, see? see I, and I'm, I'm one of the good milers in town, except for the high school and college cross-country teams. It was true. It's a true statement. So, so I, this is going on in his brain, you see. But there was a guy by the name of Ron Dawes from the Twin Cities. Well, Ron Dawes turned out to win the Jack 15 five times, see. First, I mean, and he was one of the best runners in the Midwest. And Hilton, Hilton didn't know that, and Ron hadn't won five times by then, and that was in four years. So, so, uh, so Hilton kind of went up beside uh, Ron, and they came came down that that hill from White. Well, Hilton could hold his own downhill, and at just the start of the race. And he did, uh, uh, but he shouldn't have. <laughs> well, if, after he turned the corner, it, it got gr almost gruesome. <laughs> the, boys, uh, the boys on the flatbed waiting for him at the one mile mark had to pull him and lift him and get him on the flatbed. <laughs> That last half mile, it, it was awful. <laughs> See, so I'm sure I'm sure when the race was over and he recovered, he he, he was he would have uh, liked to have been the and should have been like the anchor. You know, mm -hmm. there's a, there aren't any Ron Dawes coming in at the at with the last people. See, so. Uh, uh, that that was an interesting uh, experience, but it it made me think of, of uh, just Hilton Briggs and, and what he could do. He he uh, he also was he also turned out to be uh, a big factor in in the three wall uh, uh, three wall 
handball uh, court on uh, on the campus in, in the, uh, uh, the the uh, barn as we called it, and and it was, we had an interesting team. Uh, there was, uh, uh, of course, Hilton and myself, and then there was uh, Stan. Uh, um, I'm going to have some trouble on some names. Stan Marshall. Stan Marshall. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Stan, Stan Marshall was on the team, and Al Kurtenbach was on the team, and and we we uh, used uh, uh, cards to determine the uh, partnerships each uh, uh, each day as we play as we played our matches, but in a three wall situ situation. Or the ball, of course, can come out the back end, and sometimes uh, the, the ball uh, comes out on the fly, and sometimes it hits the floor, and, and and then takes a bounce. And there happened to be a pipe along one wall uh, at the back back of the uh, playing area, and we, being gentlemen that we all were at times. <laughs> why why we decided that the person closest to the pipe would make the call and he could shout it out loud pipe pipe and of course uh, then the point had to be or could be and had to be uh, replayed well Hilton was one of, uh, I thought there were three people that needed slight adjustments uh, in their eyeglasses. Because <laughs> I, 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 innumerable times, I, I, I watched that ball go back and never touched, wasn't even near the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> and yet those guys would call out pipe, pipe. So, so it, and it, it, it was good because they, they were competitors, see, and, and, and you need competition in every area of your life, so so that was good. Um, we think back to '66, and it was completely different in in the, the next ten years. The, the major changes that, that came about uh, in Brookings, South Dakota, and their organizations and their clubs. It just it, just amazing the changes. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, Bartling's Nike shoes came in, <laughs> into effect in '68. In, uh, in you see, two years after this famous relay team. Hi, Peggy. And and, uh, and then in '69, which is the bit the big year, I I thought uh, the Prairie Striders were organized and, and came into existence, and also a firm called Dactronics. <laughs> See, just think of that, how, the, how much long ago that must have been. Because <laughs> we feel that Dactronics has been around forever. See, but they came in in 69. So th those were interesting things. Then, then in 70, Runner's World uh, hit the picture, see, and uh, and they were actually organized by two guys from uh, Iowa that moved out there together. One of them turned out to be the publisher, and the the other one turned out to be uh, the editor of Runner's World. So that 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 was a, a major factor. Well, th there was this shoe store in the basement that had, they had a connection uh, with a furniture store upstairs in the same building. They were, in fact, a little research we found out, they were the same owners. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, they thought, and I can't remember the particulars of it, but Runner's World in, uh, in 1970 and 71, uh, 
with those two guys at the helm turned out to be uh, the leading magazine for the running community and still uh, still in publication. So so it, it it did well, but the people the people in the uh, shoe Nike shoe store thought well. Uh, we we've, we've got to get this running scene going. Uh, we had some tricks up our sleeve, and and the first year, why we had over over 800 members the first year, if you can imagine. I, I can't believe it yet. But uh, what was the secret? It's a cinch. One dollar to be a member of the first <laughs> run, the first year. Nobody's going to turn you down, even when times were tough like they were. They, one dollar, they had to be dues. Then, the big incentive, and it's almost unfair, uh, was that if you were a member of the Prairie Striders, you got ten dollars off your shoes. <laughs> Well, simple <laughs> mathematics, you're, you're, you don't have to be a genius to realize you should be a prayer strider if you're going to buy those dumb shoes. So, so, so that, that happened. And, and, and that's how we ended up with uh, 800 members the first year. Well, that creates problems that you have no idea that are, that are coming. The day of reckoning is when you, <laughs> when you send when you send out your renewal applications, and you've got to use the post office. No problem. Uh, the stamps were three cents. See, <laughs> and, we, and now with our shoe collection, we can afford three cent stamps. See, so, so we stamp both envelopes. Uh, the one we sent to our 800 members, and, and also returns. <laughs> so we they we expected they'd return them. See, and and uh, for when they're stamped, and then they did. However, uh, the the production needed to turn uh, to send out 800 uh, envelopes to members was overwhelming. We, we, I mean, we got Lou Agerbrotten in, into the picture, and without her, I, would, I don't know, we'd still be down there, <laughs> like, <laughs> licking those stamps. So, so we did get the job done, but it, but it taught us a lesson, and the, and the board, at the Prairie Striders board, used some good judgment, and they increased the dues for the second year to two dollars. <laughs> well, we had a few letters and a few people come in, and, and they said, they, "This is awful." They said, "We've never belonged to a, a, a club that doubled their dues." <laughs> shame, shame on you! But, but they got this off their chest, see, and and, and they they still wanted to be members. However, our membership dropped to four four hundred and twenty five people. Well, that that was manageable, and uh, w we went up to three dollar dues the next year, and and we ended up finally at fi at five dollar dues, and we're still at five dollar dues, <laughs> and a lot of our members are they're unique people. They move all over the country, and 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 they still send us. They're dues, but but over and above that is is, is the fact, and, and I, it's hard to believe. I would say two percent of the returns on the current dues of five, maybe two percent, pay five dollars, and they, and then they they send twenty dollars. <laughs> Fifteen dollars or ten dollars, they donate at the time of of their dues. Now, uh, I, uh, a person dealing in psychology could probably explain.
explain it. I, I certainly can, but, but uh, it's got to be the feeling out there that, that this club that I belong to is worth more than five dollars. And they're doing a good job and, and, and they need us behind them. And they, and they keep sending, we get tons more donations than we get dues money if, if a certified public accountant would, would, would report it. But, but I think we keep those things as kind of a secret. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the, the, the Prairie Striders, yeah, the Prairie Striders came into effect in, in uh, Well, their, their second year, the club's second year, was the, the uh, first year of uh, Runner's World. And see, with this furniture store connection, why we, we had a place, uh, we had bookcases for sale. Well, my brother and I, we confiscated some of the stuff upstairs, and, and, and as these... Uh, periodicals kept coming in, we had a place to put them, see? And, and, and they were nice bookcases, and we utilized them, see? And, and more magazines came into the picture. Running Times got in on it, see? And, and, and it snowballed uh, through the 70s. Well, all this time, Hilton Briggs was, was operating. I mean, and doing his his thing, and and, and he 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 was a prairie strider. He came in, and, and he bought shoes from the from that uh, organization, and, and he stayed in touch. And one time he came in, he he says, "Gosh, you've got a regular library going here, Bob." He says, "You uh, you you've got to keep keep it going. It's a uh, Needed for the for the club, uh, and, and they can eventually check out all these materials, and and it's it, it's got to happen. Well, I hadn't started indexing yet, so I I thought uh, I thought to myself, well, well, he's right. We we we've got to utilize uh, these assets that we have in the form of all these uh, magazines. Well, the second year, uh, evidently the advertisers in, in Runner's World uh, must have put the heat on, 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 the, uh, on the magazine saying, uh, we'll take ads out, but we're not going to do it, do it forever in your magazine until you get your subscription lists up, see? It's no, they need, they, they were interested in numbers. Well, so I'm, I'm sure it happened with a, with only, there was only two guys running that thing at that time. And they, and they were, uh, uh, they, they were good people and they, and they, but they weren't, they hadn't been in the picture on, on starting a magazine, see. So, so they came up with, with a promotion on the second year, and you could get, if you were a member, and of course we, we were already members, if you could, if you uh, were a member, you could get Runner's World for life. Yeah. Well, <laughs> for $75, see? Well, we came up with the $75. And, and they, they appointed me to, to be the recipient because I was a, a half librarian by then. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I agreed they could send the subscription uh, in my name and, and that sort of thing. And, and I, I have never sat down and figured how much money that must have been in subscriptions from 72 to the present time, we're still getting them. See, so, but our and our conscience isn't bothering us. 
<laughs> so uh, those kind of things happen. But but Hilton Briggs, uh, on one of his visits, also when he admired the bookcases and the contents of the bookcases, he he said to me, he says, you know. Uh, you're getting a lot of, and this is the middle 70s, he said, you're, get, you're getting a lot of, uh, of uh, magazine stuff in there, and three or four new, uh, new magazines on running came into the picture, you see, and, and uh, things were going well for us financially, so we, we kept subscribing to them, and the library kept getting bigger and bigger. He said, well, he said, there's going to reach a point where, where you, you're going to need some help on, on, uh, on library uh, assistance from knowledgeable people and, and also uh, uh, you're going to need their, uh, their know-how on how to utilize all these magazines. He said, uh, he, he said, uh, "We've got a, we've got the college library up there on campus." He said, "He, he said, uh, what you should do, in his opinion, was take up a, a year's volume and and go to the counter and tell the people there uh, that you would like to send your year's volumes of these." publications in with the things they send in the library people, the library itself. And, and uh, you'd like your stuff to go along with them. And, and if, they, if they frown, why, by all means, t t tell them uh, uh, Hilton Briggs uh, <laughs> wants you to do this, see, because he's a member. He, he never got on the board, he, ne and he never, but, but he, he, he's something else. So, so we did that in the middle 70s, and, and I'd, make, I'd, been, I'd make my runs up here with a year's volume, uh, uh, number of issues, and, and, uh, and I'd press the button down there, and, and go up that dangerous stairway <laughs> to, the, to the landing, and, and, uh, and in just a little while, the door would open and, and I'd, I'd go in and I'd go through the motions. Well, well, for a couple of years, they looked at me a little bit quizzically, if you, you know, uh, and it turns out they weren't at all in the business of doing outside work. I mean, but the key, of course, was Hilton Briggs, they, you know. And then, and then they got used to me coming in that back door, pressing that button, and, and usually then they would wait on me, and I'd either give them a $5 bill or a or a Prairie Strider check, see? And, and the thing just, you know, after a while, why it was just assumed that it was okay, see? Although I've heard stories since that as the head librarian, uh, if it changes as the head librarian, well, I've, I've heard stories that, like this, who is that guy? <laughs> you know, you know. So, so, um, but we overcame all all that adversity, and things just and it, and the relationships with this place just gelled. I see. I I wish I'd have uh, been sharper uh, at, at the time, but but. See, I've uh, I've actually accused uh, Sandy, who's here with us today, and and eating up a storm. I've I've, uh, I've accused her of of uh, answering that doorbell in the seventies. 
Well, <laughs> she, she was she was about half mad. <laughs> she said, she says, I, I didn't even come on board for another, another 10 years from that date, see? But I, I kind of, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I kind of remember her in her early days, and I'm just off a few years, see? <laughs> so, and, and also, I remember uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth too. She's, hadn't she been here a while? Probably. Yeah. Uh, okay. A and I remember those two uh, helping me and taking taking my five dollars, and, and and they they were always very nice to me. And and the the beauty of the whole thing now is uh, the staff. I have never, and I know nothing. I, I'm, help, I'm helpless in, in this place, but but they never turn me down, and they're and they're, they're so darn smart that I can't believe it. See, and and they're so helpful to me. So I'm not surprised I have the, these super warm uh, feelings about this place and about uh, the, the brick and. Tickle pink about it. Now, there is, it's like Hilton wishing he hadn't run that first leg. It's like, it, it's the same thing with me on this, on this count. At the end of the hall, on the main floor at the end of the hall, employees only. <laughs> well, they, there's not one side. There's two sides. <laughs> one's up, up above the door and one's to the left. I came on board, see, in 2015. I got eight years in, see. But I know that I'm not an employee. I because they don't pay me. <laughs> so it's pretty easy to 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 face up to that. So now it is finally solved. <laughs> I, I have, I have in my hand an ID for SDSU and in the bottom right hand corner it says staff. <laughs> T-A-F-F. -F. <laughs> so, uh, if you've got any uh, appointments, why, you can still get to them. And, uh, and I uh, have another bi uh, biscuit, and we'll, we'll visit more. All right, th thank you. And I'm sorry I had more than a few words. <laughs> Okay. <laughs>